So you want to stop pushing mythic plus keys and you don't know where to start. Well, this is going to be the series for you. I'll be going through everything you need to know to start pushing. I'm going to be covering your user interface today, including keybinds, macros and add-ons, but I will also be covering how to do the most damage, use your CC and use your defensives, and also a final video on being a successful pug player and then graduating into a team. The general idea of this series is going to be helping new players get into Mythic Plus and elevating your gameplay and get the highest loot possible. Just before we start then, I would like to ask for your support with a thumbs up and a subscribe. At the moment, only 87% of you are subscribed to my channel and honestly, this goes a very long way in helping me achieve my end goal of becoming a full-time content creator. I have a family to support and before I can even think about achieving my dream of becoming a full-time content creator, I have to get a stable wage from this and honestly, like I said, your support with a like and a subscribe would be greatly appreciated. It really would help me achieve that goal, so thank you very much. Without further ado then, let's get started. Like I mentioned before, we will be covering keybinds, macros and UI today. If you want any of the information from this video, please just head on over to my Discord linked in the description down below. I have a UI channel set up there where you can pick up any parts of my UI or my keybinds that you wish. So you can just pick and choose the parts which you would like. If you need to get something specific, then it should be there. But that being said, let's just get started then. We're going to start with keybinds. Binds are honestly the backbone of gaming and making sure that you have a set of keybinds which work for you is obviously absolutely essential. If you don't have binds that are going to work for you, then you're not going to be able to play the game. So keybinds are usually different for every player. If you have something which already works for you, then it's probably best not to rock the boat. So you don't necessarily have to use the keybinds which I'm about to go through. But what I will be covering is my own binds and why I've come up with them. So feel free to ignore it, but you can follow my logic and my reasoning to change something that you use if you would like to. Now, there are two things which I suggest setting up to allow you to play effectively, right? The first thing is changing your movement keys. So the default Blizzard keybinds use the turn left and turn right functions as the A and D keys and then they have a strafe left and strafe right set up as your Q and E keys. Now you don't actually need to turn left and turn right okay. You can just use your mouse to turn and control the camera and I'm sure that's the way that most people are playing but those of you who don't know you can already do this in game just by right clicking with your mouse and then you can move the camera however you like. So so to get yourself two very easy keybinds back, I suggest you swap A and D to strafe left and right. This will respectively let you get Q and E keybinds back, which is very, very useful as these keys are very close to W, A, S and D and therefore are much easier to press than most of the keys on the keyboard. Some players will also remove back pedal from their bindings. So you get the S key to use as another binding. This is because Backpedaling is slower than moving forwards, so it's often frowned upon. However, as a tank, I often find that I want to backpedal, so I'm really not a fan of removing the bind, because if you decide you ever want to tank in the future, then you're going to have to all of a sudden play with the S key, and it's going to feel strange. So I would highly advise not removing it if you ever think that you are going to play a tank. But if you don't think so, then honestly, you probably could remove it, as most of the time you want to be moving forwards. Even if you're trying to run away from something, you want to move forwards as you're going faster. So that is a possibility. It's not something that I use, though. Let's talk about this second point then, right? So these are all of my other keybinds. So for me, I use one through five, so that's one, two, three, four, five, Q, E, R, F, C, X, T, G, and V. Now, there's a lot of keys there, but actually they're pretty close to the W, A, S, and D keys, and because they're the closest keys, then those are the keys that I find the most comfortable to hit. I know there are some players that use their thumb to hit B, N, and M, for example. Some players even go up to six, Y, H, but I don't like these keys, they're too far away. Other players even use F keys. Overall, I don't need them. I can get away with only the keys that I've just mentioned. And then I use something called modifiers to get even more. So if we just open up all of my bars here and stop them from being hidden, you can see I have something like 50 plus keybinds here. But like we just discussed, I only have a handful of actual keys bound. I'm then using modifiers for all of these basic keys. Now, by modifiers, I mean shift, control, and alt. So for all of the keys that I mentioned before, so one through five and Q through V, I then have shift, control, and alt. 
versions of these buttons so I get more binds. So let's just take an example of Q here. I have Q bound to blind. I have Shift Q bound to focus blind. I have Control Q as gouge and then I have Alt Q as mount. So I get four bindings for every single button that I use on my keyboard. I would absolutely suggest getting used to playing with Shift and Alt. I don't like Control as much. Control is a bit awkward for my hand, so I put things that I very, very infrequently use on Control, but I'm quite happy using Alt and Shift keys as part of my rotation or buttons that I press fairly frequently, so say once every 30 seconds. So I try and focus on those, but again, it's completely up to you and whatever you find comfortable. You might find the controls more comfortable, so you could put rotational abilities on them if you would like to. The final buttons, which I have bound in, so we just mentioned that I have 48 keys available through modifiers and the basic keys that we have, but then I also have some others. So the final buttons which I have bound are the middle mouse buttons. So I have middle mouse and then I have shift middle mouse. Those are two extra keys that I get. I then also use W and S keys, which are normally used for movement, but I have them set up with modifiers. So W is move forwards, S is move backwards, but I have shift W set up for ambush on rogue. And then I have shift S set up for healing potions. So those are just a couple of examples again of how I use those keys and you can do exactly the same you can use shift control and alt with w and s if you would like to again some other players will also bind a and d with modifiers so that means you could have shift a and shift d but i don't do this as i find i'd often press these abilities accidentally whilst moving and strafing so it turns out that most of my movement that i do is with the mouse and then when i need to move left and right i use a and d so having shift a and shift D abilities doesn't make sense for me because I'm pressing those buttons fairly often for movement. Now let's talk about how I set up my abilities then. So you know exactly which keybinds I use. I personally play lots of characters, right? So I use all those keybinds for every single character. And even if I'm playing on an alt, I want to have a system that I use so that I know which abilities are going to be in the same place every single time. Now, what do I actually mean by that? Well, what I mean is that normal damage abilities, right? So abilities that I'm pressing very, very frequently. I have them set up on keys one through five. I then have Q for CC. So for Rogue here, again, same example, I have it as blind. I then have E for stuns. So I have it set up for kidney shot. If I was on Paladin, for example, that would be a hammer of justice, right? I then have R set up for kicks. So every single class that I play has kick on R. I then have F for movement. So here you can see that it's for shadow step, right? If I was on mage, that would be blink. I then have X for defensives. So here it is cloak of shadows. I have shift X as evasion, right? Again, using Paladin as an example, I have Bubble on X. This is just my go-to button for all of my immunities and defensives. And I then have C for major damage cooldowns. So here that is Adrenaline Rush. Again, going to Paladin as an example, I would have Wings on the C key as that is what I know is my big damaging ability button. So it's always the same across all the classes that I play. And like I say, I play a lot of alts and having a system set up is perfect because it allows me to play the class and jump into the class every single time and feel like I'm right at home. Again, though, you don't have to follow these binds. So I'm not suggesting that you say, use Q for CC and you use R for kicks and you use button C for your major offensive abilities. I'm just saying you should try and get a system set up for yourself so that when you jump onto new classes and characters, you can always play. It's all just preference at the end of the day, but like I said, get yourself a system. That's my number one suggestion. Next then, let's talk about macros. So we've been through keybinds, next we have macros. Now, this is gonna be fairly quick. I'm not gonna go into detail on them, but what I want to go over are some generic macros that I use constantly on every character, and I would also suggest you do the same. So these are focus macros, mouse over macros, cursor slash at target macros. So that means that you can immediately use an ability at your cursor or at your target, and then also help slash harm macros. So first of all then, let's take a look at each of these and why you should use them. Focus macros allow you to cast an ability on your focus target whilst doing damage to another target. I have focus set up as shift tab in game, so I can use a keybind to focus a mob in Mythic Plus. I don't have to right click their portrait and select focus. This will then allow me to cast a kick or kidney shot on them, even though I don't have them targeted like I just mentioned. 
I think that this is absolutely essential for Mythic Plus and you should try and incorporate this into your game as well. And I would just start today. It means you don't have to worry about changing targets, clicking on the frames in the middle of combat to kick them and then changing back to your main target. Being able to just have a focus set up and then press a single button to be able to kick your focus is going to save you invaluable time and brain power. And honestly, it just makes your life much easier. So I would absolutely suggest setting this up. Next, we have mouse over macros, and it's exactly the same principle, but it allows you to keep a main target and a mouse over target's plate, kick them rather than swapping targets. So again, this just means that if you have more than one target, which you need to kick or stun or whatever in a group, then you can still keep your main target selected, and then you could kick one and you could stun the other, right? And that's, again, exactly the same principle, but it allows you to save time, save brain power, and instead you can just funnel into the, the highest HP mob in the pack, which is very, very useful for you and your group. Next macro we have then is cursor macros or target macros. This allows you to send an ability which you would normally need to place on the ground, right? So it'll have a ground reticle. Instead, you can place this directly on a target or at your mouse location. This is very, very useful, again, for saving clicks in the middle of combat and being able to quickly react with targeted abilities. Usually, if you have a ground effect, you're going to have to be spamming it and then click your left mouse button. Sometimes you can even unselect and select a different target accidentally. In general, I would normally use these for anything which is actually part of my rotation. OK, so what do I mean by that? I'll give you a good example, right? On Windwalker, I will have Bone Dust Brew asked at my cursor location rather than using the ground reticle. That means I don't have to click in the middle of my rotation. However, say I might have a ring of peace set up so it still uses the ground reticle as I need to be able to move the position and make sure I'm knocking the correct mobs with ring of peace. So again, you don't have to follow this exactly, but that's just my general advice. If you have a ground effect that you need to press frequently as part of your damage rotation, those are the ones that I would have set up to either cast at your target or at your cursor. Finally then we have help and harm macros. Help slash harm macros are pretty much go-tos for healers but in general these can be used by anyone so what these macros actually do is it allows you to save keybinds. For example let's look at my resto shaman here. If I have a friendly player targeted I will be casting healing wave but if I have an enemy targeted I'll be casting lava burst so that allows me to either Cast Healing Wave or Lava Burst, depending on who I have targeted, which saves me a keybind. I don't need a keybind for both Healing Wave and Lava Burst. I'd suggest setting this up whenever you have healing abilities on any spec. That means that even when I'm playing something that's not a healer spec, so for example, if I'm playing Elemental Shaman, if I use my Lightning Bolt keybind on myself, I will actually be healing myself. So it saves you a lot of keybinds, and honestly, those macros are pretty easy to set up, so I'd absolutely suggest doing that. Right, now that we have both keybinds, and we have macros out of the way then, let's talk about add-ons. So add-ons are probably the greatest tool that you have at your disposal for making Mythic Plus easier. Now, I genuinely believe this. If you have a good UI and you can easily tell what's happening and when it's happening, I promise you will have a much more successful time in Mythic Plus. Something which we will cover shortly is having a coloured set of nameplates. And like I just said, I genuinely believe that this is one of the best things that you can do to just instantly elevate your game. If you can just straight away tell which mobs are dangerous and need kicking every single pack that you pull, you'll be a better gamer for sure and you will see a better performance. I absolutely promise this. So now that you understand why having a good set of add-ons can help you, right? How do we actually install add-ons? So for very new players, if you would like to install add-ons, I would head on over to CurseForge and download their app. I have a link in the description of this video. This will let you install all add-ons that you actually need. I promise you this isn't a promotion. I'm not getting paid for this. I just genuinely believe that this piece of software is the best thing at its job. And so I thought I'd give them a free plug. I use it all the time. And like I said, I just feel like it's the best piece of software for installing add-ons. So I would suggest that you get it as well. Once you have it installed, the software will look like this. All you do is you go to the top here and select get more game add-ons. Then you can search for the add-on which you want. Now that we know about where to get add-ons, let's actually talk about my philosophy on my UI and how I have selected my add-ons then. 
the underlying principle for me is that I want a minimalist interface and I want to only see the information on screen that I absolutely need. If it has no need to be there, it's just cluttering my UI and I want to get rid of it. It's only a distraction if that's the case. And honestly, I just want it off the screen. So keeping that in mind, what add-ons do I actually use then? The mandatory add-ons that I use are week orders, later details or any other DPS meter, method dungeon tools, and then I use big wigs and little wigs, although again, it could be any other boss mod. That's it. I don't think there's anything else that you need. I think that these are the five core add-ons. Everything else you can get from the default Blizzard UI. So I think that this covers 99% of things that you need and therefore I wouldn't have any more. I do have some additional add-ons which I'll cover at the end, but these are more quality of life add-ons. Like I just said then, the first add-on which I suggest you should get is weak auras. Weak auras are essential to playing WoW. Now, honestly, everyone needs this add-on. It lets you present any timer or event in-game however you would like. This means that you can literally have some text pop up on screen based on something that a boss is doing and tell you exactly what to do. This is a bit of a warning and honestly this add-on is incredibly complex and to be able to write your own weak auras would need an hour long video by itself, but that isn't actually necessary. I no longer make my own weak auras anymore, all I do is I use other people's and this isn't to say that I'm lazy, okay? It's because everything you could ever need is on a website called wago.io. I'm not joking when I say this, literally any weak aura that you need has probably already been made and is posted there. So all my weak auras that I use my rogue are posted on my Discord under my UI channel and if you'd like to get them you will be able to find them on wago.io. So the main weak aura pack which you see in the middle of my screen here is taken from Afanar. This guy just does an absolutely incredible job. I have very few faults to pick with them. He produces his own packs for every single class and spec in the game and they literally do everything that you need. I would highly recommend his packs for any class that you play. I will always usually alter them slightly but it's never anything more than moving stuff around or changing the alpha ratios. So I'll just quickly show you here on my rogue, I have moved out all of my CC into a new bar and then I have moved that bar to the edge. That's the only thing that I have changed. And again, it's very, very simple to do that sort of stuff. I'll just show you quickly here. You can move things out of groups, make new groups, and then you can move that new group as you please. Final thing that I'd like to say then is if you search on YouTube, you will find plenty of videos on how to use weak auras if you are interested in making your own. I may make a video in the future, but for now, I genuinely believe you don't have to know this and instead you can just use other people's. So I'm not going to talk about them anymore, but some quick mentions of weak auras I think you need to play Mythic Plus in WoW then. You need an interrupt tracker. Again, you can find this on my Discord. You need a thundering timer. You need a dungeon pack. You need a set of sounds to notify you of frontals. These are the four weak auras which I will always play with on every single class that I take into Mythic Plus. And again, I have all of this on my Discord if you'd like to go get them. The second add-on that I use, and I think everyone should, is called Plater. Plater is essentially weak auras, but instead for nameplates on top of enemies. Nameplates are the things you see above enemies' heads, and this is where you get most of your information about enemies from. Because it's where you get most of your information on enemies from, it is vitally important to have a clean set of nameplates that give you just the information that you need and nothing more. If there's lots of clutter on your nameplates, it can be incredibly hard to tell what enemies are doing. So let's take a deep dive into the add-on then and what you can easily change from my Plater profile. First and most important thing to make sure your nameplates are doing is stacking correctly. If your nameplates aren't stacking, then you'll end up not being able to see cast bars or click on enemies. You can change the stacking height under the general settings here to make sure your plates are stacking correctly. If you want to do a test, and make sure the stacking height is correct with cast bars, then you can head to the cast bar section and hit toggle cast bar test. This will let you change your stacking height to make sure you've got enough room to be able to see cast bars in there. You'll be able to see what a group of enemies looks like when all of them are casting together. The next thing you want to do is you want to keep track of buffs and debuffs. 
By default, I track absolutely nothing. I only want to track what I need to. So like I mentioned before, minimalist philosophy is my go-to for my UI. And as a rogue, that means I don't want to track anything. To give you a different example though, let's just say we're on Windwalker Monk. On Windwalker Monk, I do want to track Mark of the Crane. For tracking debuffs such as Mark of the Crane, I would highly recommend using the buff special section. So here you can add any spells that you like so that they appear to the side of the nameplates and you can track the debuffs very, very easily. They aren't going to stack in the middle of your screen with the other nameplates. Instead, they're going to be at the side and it's going to be much easier to see which mobs have the debuffs. By default, my plater is also always tracking CC and spellable effects. That means you will be able to tell which mobs have been stunned or which mobs have an effect which you can remove. It doesn't matter what it is, if it's an enrage effect and you're playing rogue, you will be able to see stuff which you can use shiv to remove. So regardless of what you're playing on, you will always be able to see it. Again, playing shaman, you will be able to see things which you can purge. So I would leave those settings exactly as they are and instead just use the buff special section so that you can see debuffs that you want to track at the side of these dispellable effects. The third and honestly the most important thing which I have already mentioned is the nameplate colours. So if you come to the NPC colours and names section in Plater you will be able to select any enemy that you have seen in game and change the colour of the nameplate. The reason why this is so powerful is because it can tell you what you need to do for each pack in a dungeon before you even have pulled. So for an example I have labelled every single mob which needs a cast interrupted as yellow. So that means I already know if there are three yellow mobs in a pack that I'm going to have to be kicking a lot and I might even want to be using stuns or CC to stop some of their casts. The reason why this is so good is because it allows you to see what's going to happen each time you come into a pack without having to read names and know every single pull beforehand. You're playing in a pug, all of a sudden a tank pulls two packs that you've not really pulled before, you immediately know exactly what's going to be going on and what you have to watch out for. I've also coloured every mob that needs to be stunned or knocked back or CC'd to stop them from casting a deadly spell as orange. I have high HP mobs as purple, so these are enemies that you want to do the most damage to and try and focus. And then I have high HP mobs that have a cast that you need to kick as bright pink. So just to run through that again, yellow means that you need to kick a cast. Orange means that you need to stun, knock back or CC a cast. High HP mobs that you want to focus and make sure you're doing damage into are purple. And then high HP mobs that actually also have a kick are in bright pink. The final option in play, uh, which is very useful, and again, I have in my player profile is the cast bar color. Under the option cast colors and names, you can select certain casts from enemies that need to be kicked and highlight them a different color, or you can add glow effects. Again, this makes it so you don't have to know every single cast in the game, and instead you can just watch out for those bright orange cast bars and kick them as your priority. This again, just makes your life easier and you know exactly what you need to do at each pack that you're gonna come into. With that all out of the way then, for Plater, let's move on to the next add-on. And the next add-on which I think everyone needs is a DPS meter. The one that I use and prefer is called Details. Details will allow you to track your group's damage done, damage taken, see how people died with detailed death logs, or even review the number of interrupts which people have cast throughout a dungeon. You can also add multiple windows so that you can see your damage done currently or the damage done overall, so you can check the overall performance of your group. I use details as my go-to damage meter, but honestly, you can use whatever you prefer. I just like details because of its functionality. The next add-on that I think everyone needs to play Mythic Plus then is called Method Dungeon Tools. So this add-on allows you to pre-plan your dungeon route in-game by selecting different trash packs to make sure you don't pull too much and you can plan around your cooldowns. It is incredibly useful as you can link your routes to others in game and discuss this with your party before you actually start a key. Usually routing is just up to tanks, however if you have MDT and you can discuss the route with them beforehand, 9 times out of 10 they will listen and make an adjustment if that's something that you would like to do. 
It's better to talk about it before the key than during it and potentially deplete. So I normally always ask for the root and then I will start discussing it with them before we get into it. This only really applies if it's a high key that I'm trying to plug. If it's just a normal key, then I never really do this. But at higher levels, it's absolutely something that you should consider and should try and use as well. Finally, the last add-on, which I think everyone needs for Mythic Plus is a boss mod add-on. Personally, I use big wigs and little wigs. They have a very minimalist approach, which I love. You basically get boss timers for raids and dungeons with some basic emphasis and sound effects, whereas the other boss mod option out there, Deadly Boss Mods, is a much more in your face and louder version of the mod. So I instead prefer big wigs and little wigs, but you can absolutely get away with Deadly Boss Mods if you would prefer it. Because big wigs and little wigs is a more muted version of a boss mod, I will instead add emphasis to abilities that I really need to focus on. I can also add countdowns. So if you come to the big wigs options menu here, you can change sound effects to say shotgun sounds or ringtone sounds, or you can add countdowns to the big abilities, which you need to keep track of in dungeons. You can do this by selecting the dungeon you would like. You can then select the boss or trash mob that you would like to, and then you can select the ability. Once you're here, you can then either add the countdowns or change these sound effects, like I just mentioned, so you always know what's happening and when it's happening. In general, using colors through Plater, sounds through boss mods is a great way to make sure you know what's going on and you're getting the most information back from the game and all the information that you need. It's much easier to react to a sound than it is to react to a cast bar. So if you find yourself that you're taking too much damage or missing abilities entirely, then this is something that I would suggest. Go into your boss mods and change those abilities that you constantly get caught out by. Anyway, with those core add-ons out of the way, like I mentioned just before, I do play with some others, which I will now cover, but you absolutely don't need these. They are really just quality of life add-ons and they make the game easier for me, but they won't affect my performance or ability to perform in a Mythic Plus in any way. So like I said, you don't have to get them. The other add-ons that I use then are Angry Keystones, a simple add-on that adds additional information into the objective tracker, such as timers for plus two or plus three chests. I also use Leatric Plus, which I use as an auto turning quest or auto complete for chat dialogue. For example, this works in Quarter Stars when you're getting to the lantern for the boats and you get to go across the water, Leatrix Plus will automatically just complete that dialogue for you. I use Raider.io as an add-on to quickly see which dungeons at what key level people have managed to achieve. You can get this through the in-game scoring system, however this just gives you a little bit more detail. Other things that you can see from there, you can see if people are playing alts and they've got links to their main score, which again you can't get in-game, so in general it's just very useful if you're going to be pugging your own keys. I would absolutely suggest checking out their Raider.io page as they apply to your group. The next add-on then, Simulation Craft. A very simple add-on again that just gives you a text pad to copy from so you can quickly sim your character. If you are simming your character to find out what gear is best and you're using raid bots then you probably already have this, but if you don't, get yourself simulation craft and start using raid bots so that you can sim your own gear. I think it's a much, much better way of trying to work out what gear you need than trying to use things like stat weights from guides. Next then we have speedy auto loot. This add-on does exactly what it says. It just means you, you can loot faster, which is nice when you're out in the open world. It'll save you a few seconds here and there, which is always nice. Finally, we have Deja character stats. So this is a very, very simple and lightweight add-on again. All it does is it adds a little bit of extra information into your character pane, which allows you to see things like current eye level equipped and stat weights more easily. That's it then, that's everything about my user interface. You now know everything that you need to. You know all of my add-ons, you know all of my macros, you know all of my keybinds. So hopefully you now have the starting information to go away with and begin making the changes that you need. Like I said, with my keybind specifically, I would suggest you using your own system or creating your own system so that you don't just copy me like for like. A lot of the time it's better to not rock the boat and just keep the keybinds that you have. Other things that I suggest that you do change as well are things like my plater profile or my boss mods setup, so big week setup. 
I genuinely think that if you go in and start playing around with your own player profile and setting up your own sound effects, it will help you understand the game more and it will help you play better, especially if you go and add the sound effects. If you notice that you're getting hit by certain abilities constantly, going and adding those sound effects, I promise you, will help you play better. Like I've mentioned a bunch of times then, everything that you've seen in this video, you'll be able to go and get from my Discord. If you'd like, just head on over there and get it. Well, that's it then. We've been through everything that I think you need to get a UI and Keybinds arranged from everything plus. If you spend a little bit of time to perfect them, like I said, I really do believe that you will see a big leap in performance when pushing your own keys. It's how you view the game and react to everything, so it is literally integral to your performance. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one. I'd like to think that this can help the community and give back a little bit for how kind you've all been to me over the last six months. To reach 5,000 subscribers in half a year has honestly blown me away, so thank you all so much for your support. With that being said, if you've enjoyed it, we'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.